In this lesson, we'll take a look at how to draw a bird with pastel pencils. For this lesson, I'm using my Conte Opry pastel pencils, some of my favorite pastel pencils. And we're working on Canson Mitant's pastel paper. Now, this paper is specifically designed with two different textures. One side is a little bit smoother and the other side has a bit more tooth or texture associated with it. I'm working on the smoother side of the paper. Now, of course, this paper is a toned surface. This toned surface is going to give us a little bit of value contrast when we start adding the colors. Whenever you're working with a colored medium like pastels or pastel pencils or even colored pencils, it's a good idea to work on a toned surface so that you can have that immediate contrast of color. And we're sketching out the basic shapes here using a white pastel pencil. Then we can start developing some of the locations of color that we see on the subject. In this case, this bird has several areas that are nice and dark, so we'll just choose the black here initially. Now, black on its own is an extremely strong color. It's going to command a lot of attention, and it can make a drawing appear flat if it's used on its own. Now, in this case, we're going to layer additional applications of color over the top, and each application of color is going to mute the black a little bit. And, of course, the colors that we add on top will mix with the black quite a bit to create just a darker value of the color that we're adding. We'll add a few marks here for one of the visible talons, and then we're ready to start adding a few of the colors over the top of the darker applications. We'll start here with a medium blue. Now this blue is most similar to a primary blue, so it's not really a cerulean blue, and it's not quite an ultramarine blue. It's somewhere in between the two. Now the reason why I can't give you a specific name for the pencil is because Conte Opry doesn't label the pencils with specific names. They're labeled by numbers, of course, but I think this is actually a good thing because sometimes I think we get too wrapped up in the actual name of the color that we're using, and of course, the names of the colors do vary from brand to brand, when really we should be thinking about color theory, and sometimes we need to just experiment with the colors that we have on hand. Now, on the back of the bird and the breast of the bird, we have some darker undertones. So I'll layer a little bit of the blue that we're using with a touch of the black and gently smudge that in with my finger. Then we'll switch over to start adding white applications. Now, in these early stages of the drawing, we're just really focusing on the shapes of color that we see. We'll go back and develop some of the tonal range and the values within each section as we go. But for right now, we're just taking it a color at a time and looking at the shapes of color on the subject. So in some areas, you'll notice that the white is mixing with the blue, and we saw this when we added the blue over the top of the black applications. So mixing is naturally going to occur as we add each application of the pastel pencil. Besides the smudging that I just did with my finger, there will be no additional blending that happens in here using an external device like a blending stump or using our finger. We'll allow the marks that we make with the pastel pencil to gently blend with the applications that are already on the surface. We can see this happening here as we switch over to a bright yellow pastel pencil. Now with any drawing or painting medium, we should always be thinking about the directional strokes that are made, whether those are brush strokes or strokes made with a pencil. In this case, I'm varying the directional strokes that I'm making, allowing them to follow the breast of the bird. So in other words, they'll curve around the contour or the form of the front of the bird. Now directional strokes, of course, do more than indicate the form of the subject. They also can indicate some of the texture. So by changing the directional strokes that we make on the back of the bird here and on the breast of the bird as well, we can create the illusion of some smaller feathers. Now you may have noticed that I switched over to a yellow orange and I also used a slightly different blue in areas to add a bit of variety. Now we've switched over to a very dark gray. This may appear black, but it's actually a very, very dark gray. Now the reason why we're using the dark gray instead of black is because you'll remember that black is such a strong color. Now that we've got some color on the surface, we're going to use this darker gray to make some of the tones darker where needed. These areas include the back portion of the bird, underneath the breast, of course, and around the eyes. We'll also adjust some of the tones and values that exist in some of the colored areas, including the white areas as well. Now, of course, we're developing some of the details here with this darker tone, but we're also increasing the contrast. 
And in most drawings or paintings that we create, we want to have a full range of value, meaning we're going to have some areas of high contrast, meaning we're going to have the darkest darks and the lightest lights and the middle values in between. So we need to consider contrast as we go. So by darkening up some of these values, we're increasing the value range and thus increasing the contrast in the image. It's important to note as we continue to add additional layers of applications that pastel pencils is a patient process. Although we do get immediate feedback as we add colors to the surface, it's a process that requires typically a lot of layering of colors. Sometimes I think folks who are new to pastel pencils become discouraged after only applying a few applications to the surface. They expect that their drawing is going to be developed fully with just a few applications, and this just isn't the case. As we see with colored pencils, typically multiple applications are required. And as we add each layered application, we can see that the color has a bit more depth and looks a bit more representational. After adding a bit of light blue to the top of the head of the bird and a bit of orange to the beak, we'll switch back over to our white pencil and go over the top of some of the darker applications. This, of course, produces a variety of different grays. We can also start to focus on the areas where the light source is the strongest, again pushing that range of value in the contrast. This is especially evident at the bottom portion of the body of the bird, where some of the light is actually coming up from underneath the bird, producing an area of really strong highlight around the edges. Now at this point, we need to darken up some of the darker shadows on the breast of the bird, but we need to do so with a warmer color. So in this case, we'll use a brown instead of our dark gray. Brown is a great color for creating darker tones, but those that are a little bit warmer. Now we'll add a few of the details around the eye. We'll use the dark gray for this, and we'll also use a bit of the white to add a couple of highlights. One of the wonderful things about working with pastel pencils is just like with pastels, we can make changes to the applications that we already have on the surface. So we can add a bit of white. If we find that it's a little bit too light, we can add a little bit of the dark gray to make it a little bit darker. We can go back and forth until we arrive at the correct value or the correct color. Now, of course, not all pastel pencils are created the same. The Conte Apri pastel pencils that I'm using here, of course, allow me to layer over the top of previous applications. These pencils are nice and soft. Harder pencils may not be quite as versatile. We'll continue layering applications, and in this case, we'll add a bit more of our darker brown and over the top a bit of the yellow orange. You can see here as the yellow orange is applied, it mixes with the dark brown, creating a more natural appearance. We'll add a bit more of this color to the back of the bird as well, again considering the directional strokes that are made so that they create the illusion of small feathers. Now, of course, one of the advantages to using pastel pencils is the fact that we can sharpen the pencil to create details. Now, some pastel pencils, like the Conte Apri pencils, are simply too fat to fit in a traditional pencil sharpener. Therefore, to sharpen the pencil, we must use a blade. And you can see here I'm making cuts away from my body, shaving off pieces of the wood encasing. The exposed portion of the pencil can then be gently rubbed over the top of a sandpaper block. This, of course, sharpens the pencil to a sharp tip. It also creates an incredible mess, so make sure that you do this away from your artwork. Now back to the artwork, we'll add a few more pops of color with a bit of the blue. And we'll add a bit more detail to the tail feather of the bird with a bit of white and a touch of the dark gray. Now we'll create a little bit of a stronger shadow underneath the wing of the bird to make sure it looks like it overlaps the body. We'll add a second visible talon and then it's time to turn our attention to the branch. We'll start here with a red orange and we'll just cover the entire branch with this base color. Then we'll go back with a cream color and create some of the texture and some of the lighter tones. Then we can start to develop the darker values. Here we'll start with a darker brown. Most of the shadows will exist on the left side of the branch. 
When creating texture like this, it's important not to overthink it. We know that the form of the branch is rounded, so the directional strokes that are made to create the texture should also be rounded to a certain degree. They also flow horizontally around the form of the branch as well. So with a branch like this, it's a good idea to include both vertical and horizontal strokes to create the illusion of texture. Now we'll start darkening up some of the shadowed areas with our dark gray. For an additional color, a bit more variety, and to address some of our lighter tones, we'll use a lighter gray. You can see how this lighter gray mixes with some of the orange undertones that we applied first. This creates a more natural appearance. Now we'll add a bit of lighter green and a bit of yellow green to make the branch feel natural and alive. And then it's back with our cream color to strengthen up some of the highlights. If the highlights need to be pushed a little bit further, white can be used as well. We'll add a few last indications of some details on the branch. And then it's back to portions of the bird that overlap the branch. In this case, a few small feathers are extended out just above the beak. We'll do the same on the middle portion of the breast of the bird. And then we'll need to add a little bit of variety in tone and color to the talons of the bird. We'll use a light gray for this, and then we'll clean things up with a dark gray. Now, we'll make some of the highlights on the face of the bird a little bit stronger. We'll do this by adding a little bit of light gray, which will make the white areas appear even lighter and then we'll strengthen them up a bit with a bit more of the white. We'll also strengthen the highlight on the back side and bottom portion of the bird, and we'll add just a touch more variety to the breast of the bird with a few more applications of the white. And now our drawing of a bird using pastel pencils is complete. If you enjoyed this video, then subscribe to the channel. And if you're ready to learn even more about drawing and painting, then check out our comprehensive membership program, which includes video courses, weekly live lessons, eBooks, lesson plans for teachers, and much, much more. Just click on the link to learn more. Thank you so much for watching.